सद्गुरवे नमः श्री कृष्णापणमस्तु विद योर मैटी आई इन्वोक योर ग्रेस your blessings your mercy your forgiveness your compassion your love we are all highly grateful for you having chosen us for this divine knowledge we beseech on you to make this knowledge understandable and become a real reality in our lives our humble salutations and gratitude to the entire guru parampara om tat sat so we are on the divine discourse 45 slowly inching towards 50 a great number on the 27th of may 2020 sharvari naam samvatsar uttarayan grishma rut jest mas shukla paksh and panchami dynasty <laughs> so we now study till yesterday in verse 19 he tells arjuna what is suitable for him and there is says you have to follow the path of karma it says become a karma yogi and then in the subsequent verses he says don't ever think that me having told you to become a karma yogi is something i'm degrading you or i'm showing you a lower path no never think that way and then he gives an example of king janaka he too was on the path of uh, karma yoga he was a king like you and 
what is the level at which you can compare Janaka on the path of spirituality? You may say that, okay, he followed spirituality and he was a king also at the same time. He was one of the highest acclaimed, learned and also who was practicing the path of knowledge. And he gives an example as to how Maharshi Vedvyas, he sent his son Shukracharya immediately after completion of his education. Now you go and get certified from King Janaka. Imagine. This is the level of King Janaka and he di he did the he did lead a life of a Karma Yogi. So Arjuna, I am not at all telling you that Karma Yoga which I have given to you is of a lower brand or a lower level. No. And he then tells him further in verse 22 he says, look at me. Everybody in this world works for happiness. What happiness do I need in my life? I am the Lord myself. Bliss is abundant in me. But am I not doing my duties? It is not duty for your sake. But it is doing duty for the sake and welfare of others. That is the purpose over here. When I ask you to do your duty, you are a Shrestha. Means you are an ideal. People look at their ideal and follow. Blindly they follow. You change your style in your clothing, they will also change. You change your hairstyle, they will also change. You talk in a particular way, they will all start talking in a particular way. Why? That is how humans are. They see something great in somebody and they consider them as their hero and they start relating to them in every aspect. The way you talk, the way you dress, the way you move around, the way you um, put up. So Arjuna, you are a Shrestha. You are considered to be a hero in this world. So do not for your sake, but for the sake of others. When such is your position, you can't go and sit somewhere in the forest and say, I'm going to meditate. And then he tells about himself, I have all the bliss for what should I be working then? And then in verse 23, he explains more. So yesterday we have read the verse together, but I'll just read once again and take you forward on this. Yadi hyayam navarteyam jatu karmanya tandritaha mama vartmanu vartante manushyaha partha sarvashaha Arjuna, whatever be my state, I am from the Vrishni dynasty, son of King Vasudeva, which is considered to be one of the most prestigious and righteous dynasties. And I am a king there. And everybody knows about my glory. But I too perform all the duties which are supposed to be performed by a king and also as a citizen. I am a citizen first and then a king. I was, work I was studying under the sage Sandipani in the ashram. I used to go to the forest and pick firewood. 
for the kitchen and also pick, pick up twigs and herbs for the home and haven. I used to clean the roads in the ashram. I used to wash the clothes of my guru. I used to clean the temple. All odd jobs I have done in the Sandipani ashram. I didn't behave a wee bit as though I am from a kingly dynasty and this is all not what I should do. And you know Arjuna, once there was a Rajasuya Yajna where your brother was termed as a Chakravarti and you remember he was allocating duties before the Rajasuya Yajna. It's one of the most sought of or the grandeur functions of the on this entire planet during those days where all the kings of the planet had surrendered to your brother meaning you are also part of that so all duties were allocated Bhim Sen was given the duty at the kitchen is catering completely then Karna was given the duty of distributing gifts Duryodhan was given the duty of some financial matters. Nakul, Sahadev, they were all taking care of the horses because from far of countries the kings would have come and so the horses needed treatment, rest, proper rest, so that they can go back well. So all about the animal welfare, husbandry, all that was taken care by Nakul and Sahadev. So during that time, I saw that nobody, I was not allocated any duty. And Sri Krishna gets up over there. At the end, he says, Yudhishthir, you have not allocated any duty for me. Yudhishthir says, how can I even think of allocating work for you, Sri Krishna? Then he says, he asks a couple of times, you disturb, just point blank he refuses. He says, I can't give you work. Thank you so much, you have offered yourself. But I know where to place you, I am not going to give you any work. All this has happened only because of you. I am crowned the Chakravarti of the planet because of you and how can I do that? Then Sri Krishna says, listen. not a single sentence more, I am going to take my own duty. I will decide for myself. And there Sri Krishna decides a duty for himself, which he says to all the sages, the munis, the yogis which, who come to the Rajasuya Yajna, I will take charge of receiving them, cleansing their feet, and offering them their seat. I'll take care of them. So every Muni, Yogi, Rishi who came there, Sri Krishna used to lovingly wash their feet nicely, wipe them, and then do prokshan of that water water which it, the after the washing of their feet the water which has been the residue he takes that and he does prokshan on himself offers flowers to their feet and then used to make them sit on an asan so he took that uh, he said I took this responsibility and as far as the war is concerned Sri Krishna he became a charioter. He could have become the commander-in-chief of the Pandava army. But he became a charioter. And post the uh, war of that day, he used to take all the horses, give them a nice wash, 
and feed them properly, pack them properly, and then he used to go for his shower. So this is the way Lord Krishna lived a life, whatever he may be as king, an emperor, god, whatever he was. But when it came to performing his duties, he never took a step back. So he was telling Arjuna, look at me, Arjuna. So don't ever think that doing a duty, doing work, all that is below your grade or below your dignity. Don't think that way. And then moving forward, verse number 24. <coughs> Please repeat. Utsri de yuri me loka Nakuryam karma chedaham Shankarasya chakattasyam Upahanyami ma prajaha Says Arjuna, if I stop performing whatever has to be performed, all the worlds will perish. And I would be the main reason for the pandemonium which will happen over here. I would be destroying the entire peace of the human race. Upahanyam, meaning I would destroy Prajaha of the living entities. Karta means I will be responsible. So, I have to be careful. And so also you, because you are also a prince. And then he further explains, there is a much more uh, deeper meaning here is, as I am supposed to perform, you two have to just take that as an ideal and keep moving in, in your life. Why? It is for the benefit of the entire human race and the welfare of the world. Like say, now comparing to the current times, Let's say we talk about uh, we as citizens of a country, our duty is to vote during the elections. Now we're talking of a cosmic citizen and uh, the cosmic wheel, what we are talking you know, and just elaborating on that. When our duty is such to vote, and imagine everybody responsible who go and vote intelligently, what would be the kind of a result in terms of the formation of the government? This is, you have to visualize and imagine. Even the kind of people who would contest for elections would change. And it's all one after the other. The right people coming into position, they delivering the right things and everything going in the right order. And during such time you have seen generally people follow the celebrities, the great people, if they go and vote they also feel motivated. So here it says, it is a give and take. We have to first inspire our citizens and then the citizens further inspire us to do greater jobs. So, we have to perform the prescribed actions 
because even me as a king you as a king or a prince we are a part of the cosmic wheel and we are a part of a we are cosmic citizen so this point here again shri krishna trust from on this and says you have to do your duty now we'll take verse 25 सत्ताह कर्मण्य विध्वांसो यथा कुर्वन्ति भारत कुर्याद विध्वंसता सक्त चिकीर्षुर्लोक संग्रह Chikirshur Loka Sangraham Wishing for the welfare of the world Now here what he says See there are In verse 20 what did he say? He used the word लोक संग्रह एवापी संपश्यन हियर इज विथ अ व्यू टू दि वेलफेयर ऑफ द मार्सेस इज एस टूवर्ड्स दि वेलफेयर ऑफ द मार्सेस नाउ इन दिस वर्ड्स ही यूजेस लोक संग्रह चिकिर शोर इज एस नाउ हियर विशिंग दि वेलफेयर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड देयर ही सेस he once again emphasizes he says that the wise should always work for the benefit of the human kind or a man kind now in the second chapter he termed karma yoga differently he there he called it as buddhi yoga what did that mean people who are intelligent who have the knowledge they are the ones who can change the world around he says yes i know there are people who for material rewards material gains they will be performing actions they are it's not wrong perfectly all right let them keep doing that but then when they see somebody who is doing something without expecting anything for the welfare of others they they will get motivated and they will gradually rise in their standard of working and praying this is one of the key messages which he tries to give because if there are people of different nature so there you don't you have to be an ideal over here so several people from different levels will start getting uplifted in shrimad bhagavatam they say tavat karmani kurvitana nirvidyet yavata matkhata shravanadau va shraddha yavan na jayate it's verse 16 in canto 9 one should keep doing karma till when till the time you have not developed a renunciation from the sense objects and yearning for god the moment you start there is a deep yearning for god and you feel that these senses of the world are no more giving me pleasure till then you keep doing your karma in what manner that is also taught to us without expecting or being attached to the fruit of the action 
office, you are stressed out, you know, you have that quality in you, you keep working on those lines. Now here, if we have to uh, emphasize a little bit on this, like when you are doing, he says, you, know, you have to do your duties without attachment of the result. Here, what the Lord is trying to say is, give your best when you are doing any work. Oh Lord, I have dedicated this work to you and I don't want to see anything else. I'm only focusing at this point of time, any act you're doing, you could be even cooking at home, you're working in your office, you're buying something for the family, you're taking children to school, all this in the service of the Lord, be focused over there. This is a story true story actually, which happened in, started off in Gwalior. A father takes his son to a musical uh, class where they train uh, children for singing and uh, his name, the student's name is Tanna Mishra. So he goes and approaches the teacher and he says, uh, sir, I want to enroll my son for your class. Can you please train him? So the teacher asked the son to sing so that he could test his voice and understand where he stands on the path of uh, singing. The Tanna sang. So he says, you have a good voice and I think I can train you well. He accepts the student. The father offers his pranams and he goes away. So now Tanna is being trained rigorously by his guru. And in about seven, eight years time, Tanna becomes one of the best singers of that region. Those days, this is all about somewhere around 1600. During that time, you, you all know that they were all small princely states. And uh, the king of uh, Gwalior, he was very much pleased with Tanna and he says, please come over, why don't you become, uh, join my court. And so then Tanna started singing for the king of uh, Gwalior in his uh, court assembly. And his fame was going far and wide because people from various kingdoms, they do come to a Gwalior and, say, and vice versa. So when other kings used to come over there, they were impressed and this word spread. This news fell on the ears of uh, Akbar. Now Akbar was fascinated. He said, really? Does he sing so well? Then I think I must listen to him. And he calls for uh, Tanna to come over to um, Delhi's Darbar. And as he listened to Tanna singing, he was completely mesmerized. He went into a trance, Akbar. And he tells, from now onwards, right now, I want you to be my, one of my jewels. He had nine jewels, people of different uh, areas of expertise. He had the best in the world. That was his hobby, a flair rather. So he talks to the king of Gwalior and then... Of course, Gwalior king had to agree because he's a Samrat no, at that time. So Tanna comes over to Akbar's uh, kingdom and he starts singing over there. Then he gives him a title. 
Tan Singh. Tanna Mishra gets the title as Tan Singh. His singing continues. One day when Akbar was in a very leisurely mood, he asked, Tanna, I can't visualize that somebody can sing so well like you. How come I, I never got to uh, learn about you much earlier? I'm really mesmerized by your singing talent. Tanna then tells him, Huzur, I'm hardly half of what my guru can sing. He is multifold much better than me. Suddenly, Akbar gets a shock. What? Your guru can sing much better than you? I can't imagine that. Then he says, no, 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 then you please call him immediately. Send a word and call him immediately. Tan Singh tells uh, Akbar that he does not sing for anybody. He only sings for Lord Krishna. His God, that's all. He sings only for him. That is the reason he can sing that well. He has dedicated himself to the highest. What comes out is the voice of God. Then Akbar is so curious. He is a great lover of art. And he says, no, no, I want to listen to him. He says, if you are so keen, then we will have to go to Vrindavan and see him in a small kutia. He stays in a small, small house. We have to go there. And you cannot come like a king. You have to come like my friend or somebody like that. And we'll have to go there. And when he, when he gets a mood, he'll sing. It's not that he sings every day. Every now and then, no. So then Akbar says, I'm still okay for all this. Come, let's start a journey. So he dresses some, himself up as an ordinary person. Like like Tanna's friend or somebody, not of some high cadre. And with Tan Singh, he goes to Vrindavan. Now there he goes and he bows down before uh, Haridas. And, okay, Haridas greets him and he says, I've come with my friend, you want to stay here for a couple of days. Okay, no problem, stay here. So now they're eagerly waiting for him to sing. Morning passed, afternoon passed, evening passed, that night also passed. He didn't sing. Now Akbar is getting more and more curious. One is he has to sleep on the floor and he's getting some dry roti and dal over there. Everything is difficult for him because he's, he's living like a celibate over there. And next day, Next day also passed. Now, Tan Singh is getting tensed. What do I do now? I have brought my Huzur over here and how do I make him sing? So what Tan Singh comes up with an idea. He sings a rag in the wrong note. So no sooner he sings with that wrong note, Immediately Harida said, Tanna, what is this? Is this the way to sing? You are still not learnt? And he starts singing. And as he sings in the praise of Lord Krishna, melodious, divine, tears start rolling down Akbar's cheeks. He goes and on his knees in front of Haridas, he is listening to him with his with tears rolling down his cheeks. And then Haridas is, has, he has closed his eyes and he is singing in great devotion. Then after the song was over, he sees Akbar is there in front of him on his knees. 
he tells him get up o akbar the day you came i could make out you can't even bend properly and do a pranam because you are a chakravarti how can you bend like that that much i can understand who is a king and who is an ordinary person what we should understand here is when you do with that devotion there is a spike in the quality of your work your performance apart from the other peripheral benefits one gets in terms of the chitta shuddhi the chitta ekagrata cleansing of your shudripus or the six enemies what we have spoken about all this will be incidental but mainly when you work without attachment to the results your performance is par excellence why i am putting so much thrust on this because again and again lord krishna will come to this point work without attachment to the results this will be like coming on in every portion here and there he says that is the root cause for misery and also the root cause for your upliftment so in root cause of misery meaning if you do it properly you will be out of misery and in any which case it is there for your upliftment so imagine what you can achieve in life so one should perform their duties without attachment dedicated to the lord okay now we take up verse 26 na buddhi bedam janaye agnyanam karma sangina joshaye sarva karmani विद्वान युक्त समाचरन here again one sarjuna that see you as a wise person you should not create this harmony in the minds of ignorant people who are who are attached to benefit from any action if you say so then they will stop working so rather just keep doing in an enlightened manner inspiring manner so the ignorant also should keep performing their prescribed duties and slowly rise above this is what he conveys in this we will take up more on this tomorrow okay we'll do a q and a now and then we'll take up the anybody has questions please come on q and a or you can type it so as we have uh, discussed we are now going to do the panchakosha viveka so here we are going to basically talk about what is the supreme most which is under our cognizable purview like what are the cognizable aspects in us we have our body our mind our intellect our prana koshas and the bliss sheet what we feel bliss when there are no thoughts in our mind 
So apart from all this, we also do have the consciousness, the awareness. So here we are going to talk which is the supreme most of all the all these sheets. And there how do you determine what is which is supreme and which is not? We are having three parameters. One is is it subject to change? Second is does it have its own source of power? And third we are looking at is is it permanent or impermanent? On the basis of this we do our discrimination and understanding of the supreme most. Like as I told you in terms of reality you have Pratibhasika, Vyavaharika and Paramartika. Pratibhasika is illusory, Vyavaharika is transactional and greater than the illusory and transactional is the Paramartika which is supreme divine. Godly. So that is something which is never destructible. So we go on that theory. Okay. I hope you all are comfortably seated. Just ensure that your head, neck and spine are in a straight line and definitely not rigid. Keep them relaxed. but straight. See that there is no tension in any part of your body. Otherwise, slightly adjust that portion of your body, ease it and sit comfortably. Close your eyes gently. Your right eyelids are on top of each other as though two petals are resting one above the other. Ensure your face and forehead is completely relaxed. Expand your face and forehead a bit. It automatically relaxes. Now let's take a few deep breaths, equal inhalation and exhalation. start the Panchakosha Viveka meditation. Now, clench both your fists and release them. Now 
time slip back in a bag of skin. The body changes enormously from the time it has been born till date. It does not have any source of energy of its own. subject to death one day. Label it the body. An illusory form entity. Let's move deeper. The pranas. This five vital air life forces. Also are subject to change from time to time. They do not have their own source of energy. And at the end of the Prarabdha Karma, will cease to function. And that announces the death of the Jiva. Label it Pranamaya Kosha. An illusory false entity. Anatma. Now let's go deeper. Then is it the mind which is superior? Let's examine. The mind too changes enormously. Always turbulent, wavering. 
stubborn. Fickle. It does not have its own source of energy. And the mind ceases to operate. On the death of this body and prana. Mano Maya Kosha too is an anatma. A false entity which is illusory in nature. There for some time and not there after a point of time. Going more deeper Vijnana Maya Kosha, the intellect. The intellect also changes from time to time. Sometimes it gives a proud feeling. A guilty feeling. An acclaimed feeling. A feeling of having understood. and having not understood. Several changes happen in the intellect. The intellect does not have its own source of energy. And is subject to stop functioning with the death of the body. Kosha is a false illusory entity, anatma. Going deeper. This 
no thoughts in my mind i am filled with bliss ignorance of no thoughts this bliss is experienced during our deep sleep state every night and is not there when you wake up it keeps changing day and night it does not have its own source of energy and it ceases to operate on the death of this body is that which is the supreme most is there anything which does not change is there anything which has its own source of energy which does not die let's go deeper feel the consciousness within your body experience the awareness in your entire body the supreme most reality the consciousness chaitanya shakti the chaitanya shakti which is changeless which is the source of energy to the entire universe
which is eternal and infinite the consciousness is not in your body but the body is in the consciousness and not that the ocean is in the bay this entire creation of being non beings the mountain the sky the forest the rivers and the sea birds and animals the humans the planets the solar system the galaxy the universe and the multiverses the andromeda all these rise and fall in the ocean of this consciousness which is right within you this consciousness is the supreme most mind is an illusion which has created the limited i the illusion be aware of this fact this supreme knowledge and understand to the core that you are an illusion subject to death and mortality and the supreme most chaitanya is the supreme truth be firmly established in this truth
Now slowly rub your palms. Place them on your eyes. And gently and lovingly open your eyes. Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tassat Shri Chinmaya Sadgurave Namaha Shri Krishna Panamastu O oh Lord, our humble salutations and immense thanks for this divine knowledge, our deepest gratitude and salutations to the entire Guru Parampara. Om Tatsat. Thank you everybody for being a part of this wonderful journey. Looking forward to see you all tomorrow. Hari Om. Sata Karmanya Vidvantaha Yatha Kuru Vanti Bharata Kuriya Vidvantaha Zataha Kiki Shuloka Tangraham Nagudi Bedam Janaye Adnana Karma Sangina Josaye Taruva Karmani Vidvan Yukta Samacharam Prakrute Kriyamanani Gunai Karmani Sarovashaha Ahankara Vibhunatma Kattahamidi Manyade Tatla Vibhitu Mahabhaho Guna Karma Vibhagayo Guna Guneshu Vartante Kete Matvana Sajjade Prakrate Guna Samudha Sajjante Guna Kanmatu Sana Krishna Vido Manda Krishna Vinna Vichalave Mai Sarovani Karmani Sanyasya Dhyatma Chetasa Nirashir Nirmavo Bhotva Yudhyasva Vigata Jwaraha Yeme Matamidam Nityam Anotishtam Simanavaha 
ಶ್ರದ್ಧಾವಂತೋ ನ ಸೂಯಂತ ಮುಖ್ಯಂತೆ ಕರ್ಮಿ ಯೂಯಂತ ನಾನು ತಿಷ್ಟಿ ಮೇ ಮತ ಸರ್ವಜ್ಞಾನ ವಿಮೂಢಾಂತ ವಿಧಿ ನಷ್ಟಾನ ಚೇತ ಸದೃಶೇಷ್ಟತೆ ಸ್ವಸ್ಥೆ ಜ್ಞಾನವಾನಿ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಯಾಂತಿ ಭೂತ ನಿಗ್ರಹ ಕಿಂಕರಿಷ್ಯತಿ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಕ್ಕೇಂದ್ರಿಯಕ್ಕೆ ರಾಗದ್ವೇಷೌ ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥಿ ಅಯೋರ್ನ ವಶಮಾಗೇದ್ ಸೌಹ್ಯ ಪರಿಪಂಥಿ ಶ್ರೇಯಾಧರ್ಮೋ ವಿಗುಣ ಪರಧರ್ಮಸ್ವನುಷ್ಠಿತ ಸ್ವಧರ್ಮೇ ನಿಧನ ಶ್ರೇಯ ಪರಧರ್ಮ ಭಯಾವಹ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಉಚ ಅದಕೇನ ಪ್ರಯುಕ್ತೋಯಂ ಪಾಪಂಚರಿ ಪುರುಷ ಅನಿಚ್ಛನ್ನಿ ವಾಸ್ನೇಯ ಬಲಾವ ನಿಯೋಜಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಗವಾನುವಾಚ ಕಾಮಯೇಷ ಕ್ರೋಧದೇಶ ರಜೋ ಗುಣ ಸಮುದ್ಭವ ಮಹಾಶನೋ ಮಹಾಪಾತ್ಮ ವಿಧ್ಯೇನ ವಿಹ ವೈರಿಣ ಭೂಮೇನ ಪ್ರಿಯತೆ ವನ್ನಿ 